Sega Drunk. September 19th, 2019 is the date that the new Sega Genesis Mini drops, October 4th, 2019 for those in Europe and in the Middle East. There's 42 games on this gizmo, exactly twice the number that the SNES Mini came with. But let's face it, ultimately this thing is gonna get hacked and people are just gonna add whatever games they want. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk about some of the best Genesis games that are not already available on any version of the Genesis Mini in any region. So this is just a quick list of what I think are the 13 best games worth adding in no particular order. And just to avoid the super obvious games, I'm disqualifying sequels to games that are already on there. For example, Sonic and Sonic 2 are on most versions, so duh, of course it's obvious to add Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. You don't need some guy on the internet to tell you that. The same goes for Streets of Rage, Shining Forest, Golden Axe. But I will give a special shout out right now to Thunder Force 4. It's a little weird to see the third game on there, but not 4, considering it's gotta be one of the best Genesis games ever. So I'll say right now, if you like 3, then add four, but again, that should be kind of obvious. One of the first games I would think to add is Splatterhouse 2. Okay, in terms of gameplay depth, there's not a whole lot going on in this game, but hey, when I think Sega Genesis, one of the first things that comes to mind is gore and violence, and by proxy, Splatterhouse 2. It's a simple 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up, and yeah, the moveset here isn't exactly as at the same level as Streets of Rage 2, but this game is all about atmosphere and presentation, as well as, you know, hitting stuff and watching it go splat into the background and punching the torsos off these monsters. So yeah, if you loved horror images and this kind of atmosphere, then you'll love Splatterhouse 2. It's obvious why a game like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist wasn't included on the Genesis Mini in any region. I'm sure licensing fees were pretty hefty, but still, this is a fun multiplayer beat-em-up that's a good time. You'll recognize certain elements from the two Turtles arcade games that preceded it, and yeah, there's only five levels here that are very, very long. But still, it's a 16-bit Ninja Turtles beat-em-up. Why wouldn't you add this? Yeah, I'll go to my grave saying Turtles in Time is way better, but still, Hyperstone Heist is worth a playthrough. Speaking of games left out because of licensing issues, Aladdin is another pick to add. Now, we can all argue until we're blue in the face about which Aladdin is better, the Genesis or the Super Nintendo version, but let's face it, both games are really good. But I'll definitely say the Genesis Aladdin has the upper hand in the visuals department. The sprite work here is freaking great. And despite the limited color palette, they really nailed the look of the movie. In addition to that, Aladdin's just a fun action platformer that's not too difficult, but not too easy either. And since we're on licensed games, I also have to mention X-Men 2 The Clone Wars. The first Genesis X-Men game has some issues with the platforming and the fact that it's really freaking difficult, but X-Men 2 just nails it. There's six playable characters and they all have a completely different feel to them, which I really appreciate. There's also no limit to your mutant powers, unlike the first game, and it's just a fantastic action platformer that absolutely nails the X-Men universe. And hey, even if you don't like X-Men, this is still a fun, but tough and challenging playthrough. And hey, it's also two-player co-op for what it's worth. One game that people might miss is General Chaos, and I really admire games like this because it takes something as complicated as a war strategy game and it simplifies the gameplay while injecting it with a ton of personality. It's team-based one-on-one strategy where you pick from four different teams that all have five different skill sets, ranging between machine gunners, rocket launchers, flamethrowers, you get the idea, and your battles take place everywhere from forests, deserts, and even city blocks. You simply direct your troops where to go and where to shoot. General Chaos is a really fun versus multi player game, the rare strategy game that has a pick up and play quality to it. Now, when I did a video on the 13 best games to add to your Super Nintendo Classic, I remember thinking that I could just list all role-playing games and nobody would even bat an eye. The same sort of logic applies to the Genesis Mini, only instead of RPGs, you could just do shoot-'em-ups. Sure, it comes packaged with some great representations of the genre, like Musha and the aforementioned Thunder Force 3, but there's so many more you can add. Everything from Glaylancer to Gaiarez to Eliminate Down to Steel Empire, you really can't go wrong with any of those games. If I were to Personally, pick one. I always enjoyed Glaylancer the most. I don't know why. I guess I just managed to get further into that one compared to some of the others I listed. But yeah, Shoot 'em Ups and Genesis go hand in hand. Just pick out a couple out of this group you see here, and you'll find out why. If you'd rather lean toward run-and-gun games, then there's stuff like Ranger X and Alien Soldier. Both of these are must-ads and must-plays, simply because they're such a great representation of what the Genesis did so well, which is lots of crazy stuff happening on screen all at once. 
Ranger X has some wonky controls that are a little tough to get used to, but once you do, the game is a quality playthrough. And yeah, Alien Soldier is made available on the China-South Korea region release, but it's a must-play game developed by Treasure that might be a top 10 game on the Genesis simply because of the absolutely insane enemy design and the crazy carnage you can cause. It's so much fun, and definitely check that one out any way you can. The Genesis was also well known for sports games, and two in particular I was surprised to see missing from the mini lineup were the two Mutant League games, Mutant League Hockey and Mutant League Football. These games feature gameplay almost exactly like the EA, Madden, and NHL games at the time, only instead of mere humans as players, we've got hideous mutants, skeletons, and monsters, playing on a field made of toxic waste, or skating on a rink while dodging landmines. You can even bribe the referee in each game, it's fantastic. Even if you don't like football or you don't like hockey, both of these games are still such a good time, they're well worth checking out, and these two games should be near the top of everyone's list of games to add. One auto mission from the Genesis Mini lineup is Ristar, or Rystar, I'm not even sure the right way to pronounce that, but it's a game developed by Sonic Team, and it's a tremendously well-made platformer. You use your arms to stretch out in eight different directions to grab enemies and headbutt them into oblivion, as well as climb and fling yourself into the stratosphere. It sounds weird, but it plays really well, and the main reason it's so good is because both the level design and the enemy design complement Ristar's abilities so well. Combine that with some fantastic visuals and a great soundtrack, and you have one of the best platformers on the system. Another great platformer that got left out is Rocket Knight Adventures. This game is a classic case of a game where you get to control a character that's overpowered like crazy with a ton of different abilities, and the controls are just perfect. The way the game is laid out makes it incredibly satisfying to just lay waste to everything in your path. There's all sorts of different weapons and attacks, and the level design and enemy design is up to the task, offering a substantial challenge without feeling cheap. Some of these boss fights here are great, reminiscent of something you might see in Gunstar Heroes. Rocket Knight Adventures was made by Konami, and you really can't go wrong with early 90s Konami. This game is the complete package from the controls to the visuals to the soundtrack. It's a great playthrough. I have to mention Crusader of Senti, also known as Soleil on the Mega Drive, because there just aren't many other top-down adventure games on the system. One of them, Beyond Oasis, is coming packaged with the Mini, and if you like that game, then you'll love this. Yeah, it's kind of a shameless Zelda clone in many ways, but it does have plenty of other stuff going on, like having the power to communicate with animals? Sure, okay. And yeah, you can have up to two follow you around as companions that help you defeat enemies, with 16 that you can find, each having a unique ability. But yeah, there's plenty of hack and slash action with some puzzle solving here as well. Definitely check this one out. Last but not least, longtime viewers of this channel know that I have a certain affinity toward games that combine genres, and no game did that better on Sega Genesis than Herzog's Vi, which combines shoot 'em up and top down run and gun gameplay with real time strategy. And the way everything is streamlined together makes for a fantastic playthrough. All the typical strategy management stuff is here, but the game is structured as such that you don't get bogged down in micromanaging everything, the focus is kept on the action. This game is way ahead of its time, and to this day it's one of the best Genesis games ever made. Okay, that's all for now, let me know what your picks are for the best games not on the Genesis Mini. And as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.